Hi, I'm Hannah and welcome to our very first week of the 12 week Art for Wellbeing workshops that we're delivering online. I'm super excited to see you guys joining us today and it's just going to be a fantastic opportunity to get involved, to create, to connect with new people and just develop some new skills. You do not have to be good at art to get involved. Um, art has just been proven to be so good for mental well-being, um, for improving so many areas of health as well. And I think, especially with lockdown and stuff, it's, it's even more important than ever that we try and be creative, stay connected and um, form kind of a community. Um, so some of the guys from Creative Change Workshops are going to be joining me to help facilitate and host some of the activities, which is great. Um, and we will be basically uploading every Friday at 1.30 a YouTube video which will give you the instructions you need to take part for each activity each week. And if you are up for the challenge, um, the following Friday at 8 o'clock we're going to do an old school style um, show and tell. Now I haven't done show and tell since I was in primary school but I used to love it. I was a bit of a drama queen so I couldn't wait for my turn and I could talk for England. Now I know not everybody is like that and some people are quite shy and that's totally fine too. If you'd like to email in some pictures of what you've done that would be fantastic and we can show those or if you just want to join the online and see what everyone else is doing that's great too. We know we've all got different personality types and sometimes it can be a bit I don't know, nerve wracking to join a new group where you don't know people, but just take it one step at a time and do what you feel comfortable with. This week we're going to be doing Pebble Art. Um, Naz from Creative Change Workshops is going to be helping me. So we've got two different styles. Um, this is an example of one of the styles that I'm going to be showing you, um, which is based around Aboriginal art um, from the Australian Indigenous people. Um, and it's just sometimes good to get different ideas from different cultures to learn a little bit about the background and maybe develop and evolve them into something totally new as well. So I hope you enjoy it. Please subscribe to the YouTube channel. Um, if you get a chance, um, go on my website, which is www.hannaharia.com and sign up on there to get emails about when we're releasing the videos and all of the information you could possibly need. Um, but this should just be a brilliant opportunity and we're just really grateful to Arts La Olam for um, putting this on as part of Between Spaces and for the National Lottery and Arts Council England for funding this awesome 12-week course and I'm so glad that you can join us. Hi everyone, welcome to week one. Um, today we are doing pebble painting um, and as you can see behind me I'm at Ipswich Makerspace at the moment to film this so what you can see behind me is actually a giant um, container um, and that's where I used to do a lot of my resin work um, but it's quite a cool place we've got um, you can't really see but there's a little forge area over there we've got 3d printing upstairs it's quirky creative community but yeah, it's my creative home, so I thought I'd do the video here. Um, so what you will need is to find a pebble of some sort or a flat surface object that you'd like to use. Um, and then we're going to be doing patterns using dots. Now to create the dots, you can literally find whether it's the end of a pencil, end of a paintbrush, um, something that just has a slight circular edge. Um, and these work so much better than trying to paint dots with paintbrushes from the normal conventional way. Um, and I will show you how. Um, now the inspiration for this week's activity comes from um, the Australian Indigenous people. Um, they used to do these amazing um, pictures using dots to represent specific things or kind of like a bird's eye view of the land. They're almost like maps. Um, and my friend Pete is going to tell us a little bit more about that now. The word Aborigine is from the Latin Ab-Origine, 
which means from the beginning or origin and is used to refer to humans, other animals or plants which have been in a region or country from the earliest known times. European explorers who first arrived in Australia in the 1600s used the term to refer to the indigenous people they met there. Incidentally, it is thought that humans first arrived in Australia at least 40,000 years ago and, in fact, in recent years, evidence of human occupation in northern Australia appear to date back about 65,000 years. The terms dreaming and dream time were coined by anthropologists to refer to the Australian Aborigines belief system. The dream time is a time of creation of all things by the sacred ancestors. Aboriginal art has an iconography which has symbols for all the things that were important in the lives of people living off the land in the Australian bush. There are symbols which represent animal tracks, showing their footprints and the way they move across the ground. Goanas, a type of lizard, often feature in Aboriginal art. Their name is probably derived from iguana, a type of lizard which might also be referred to as a monitor lizard. There are many species of guana in Australia. The symbol for a person is shown as a horseshoe shape, which is like the impression people would make in the soft ground when they sit down, as they might do around a campfire or waterhole. The symbol for a person sometimes includes marks for the tools a person would carry, and this may indicate whether the person was a man or a woman, according to the tools they would traditionally use. In Arnhem Land, in the Northern Territory of Australia, there is a tradition of Aboriginal X-ray art as used in rock art, where the internal anatomical features of animals are shown. Some of the symbols vary from region to region, and artists often use their own symbols or variations of the standard symbols. So now that we've learned all about Indigenous art and the inspiration for this, um, we're going to be creating um, the patterns that are similar to the water holes or the fireplaces because I kind of feel like that's a place of community that people are drawn to. Um, so no matter what your object is, the focus point is the idea of a meeting point that draws people together. So I'm going to call mine a firestone, okay? So we might all be disconnected as far as lockdown and um, the coronavirus is concerned, but actually by getting involved in these videos, by doing activities together in community, it's kind of symbolically a bit like gathering around a fire. Um, and I really like that idea. Okay, so you could, if you wanted to, paint a base colour to work from. I actually really like the natural kind of feel of stones and the natural kind of look. So I'm going to go straight in with some dots um, and I think I'm going to start off with my larger brush ones. We have some quite big ones just to create that initial circle. Okay, so as I'm choosing to do a fire stone, I'm going to use red. Okay, here we are. So this is very cheap, just poster paint and I'm dipping the end of my paintbrush in it and what I like to do is just do a quick tester dab to make sure that it's not too much paint on the brush okay and just very carefully touch down lift off touch down lift off and the good thing about this is as well as it's quite a simple activity um, you can use different um, different objects to create different size circles. I found that when I was trying to paint circles with real paintbrushes from the bristle end, 
they just never turned out quite right whereas this just seems to be really effective um, sometimes if you put too much paint on it can drip a bit though so I'm just trying to be a bit careful and in our group we do not strive for perfection so if it goes wrong don't worry about it you can wipe it off quite easily with um, just a damp cloth and start again and um, don't worry if some of the dots seem bigger than others because I quite like the variety of it it's something quite peaceful as well some sun might have enough for another spot here we go um, and you can choose colours that you find significant for you it doesn't have to be based around you know, the colours of a watering hole or a fire it can just be a pretty pattern if that's what you'll, you would enjoy doing ok and I'm going to just pick up a slightly different kind of object so here we've got just a pencil Sorry, that's not very clear h3 pencil and um i just like the fact that the end of this is slightly different shape so we're going to just dip it into the blue paint and see what kind of effect we come out with okay and you might just want to touch off any excess so you don't get too many blobs but again it's just it's just quite effective using different sizes and shapes of ends of objects And this is not going to be exactly like um, the indigenous art that we've talked about. It's just sometimes nice to have a bit of an idea or a story behind something that you're creating. I find it quite interesting learning about other cultures and history behind different methods of art. Um, and when you think about it, art's been going on for ages, hasn't it? I mean, you look back at the, um, the cave paintings and stuff. There's this natural desire to record our experiences, like um, the Egyptian hieroglyphics, I love that, the idea of writing using picture format as well. Okay, I quite like those. I'm going to actually just let these dry for a bit um, whilst I think about what I want for the middle. But these don't have to be complicated. I mean, you can see this is very simple and it's only taken me a few minutes. But you can literally do as much or as little as you like. You can really personalise these. And um, yeah, it's just something relaxing, connecting with nature a bit. Um, and hopefully connecting with each other, even if it is virtually. Okay, now I'm going to use this much smaller um, end of a brush. that has got a much more kind of circular shape on the end. It's a bit difficult to see on the camera. But, um, I'm going to use this purple colour and dabble for nettle. Now these are going to be much, much smaller. So I might do them a little bit closer together. But I quite like that you can create different dots with different... Um, just going to go over some of these because they look like they haven't quite covered. That's better. I like the variety of it. And again, when I say we're not striving for, for, for perfection, um, obviously sometimes in um, Indigenous art, the circles are very obviously perfect circles. But in reality, if I was building a fireplace, I very much doubt that it would be a complete perfect circle. And I quite like following the line that the actual pebble makes, sort of like a natural leading the way of it. Um, I'd quite like to put some yellow in the middle, I think, which um, I haven't got at the moment. So I'm going to let this dry overnight and come back to it. Um, so you will see the work in progress. Okay, so I've let the stone dry overnight. And that's worked really well um, what I've decided to do now which is completely a spontaneous idea I had not planned to do this but sometimes that's how these art projects go you just think of something and you've got to go with it um, I have found some 
glitter paint that I really like. Um, and I thought to make this a kind of really sort of warm fire effect, I'm actually going to literally pour it over the top. Um, and you don't have to do this. This is just something that I literally just came up with and thought was cool. Um, and we'll see how it goes. It might need a good mix because that is quite stodgy, as you can see. So, because it's quite transparent, it actually doesn't matter too much. Um, we'll just get a nice little sheen of glitter. I'm pretty sure some of you are like, what is she doing right now? But I am very much about embracing experimental art and just seeing what happens. Um, okay. So this definitely needs to dry. But I'm actually really pleased with that. It's quite transparent, but it's got a really nice glittery sheen to it. Um, so I'll come back to that once it is dry. As you can see, we had a bit of a puddle left over and I hate wasting good art materials. So I've got some more stones out and I'm gonna make use of this so that we can have a whole collection of fire stones. There we go. And I like the fact that this is quite subtle. I think when it's dry, you'll probably only really see the glitter in certain lights. So you'll still retain that really nice sort of natural feel of, of the rocks. Um, and what I was also thinking was we have our fire, but it would be quite nice to create some people around the fire. So I might find some smaller rocks as well. So here are the dried stones ready for the next stage. Um, I've speeded up the process a bit so that we are not here for hours and hours. Um, I added some extra dotted rings around the fire stone and then I decided to do a snake. So I made the main outline um, and then put dotted rings around it creating circular patterns. I also highlighted the skeletal x-ray style um, using dots and finally added some yellow eyes. The dots started to get quite smudged, but rather than seeing this as going wrong, um, I embraced it and found that the new textures were quite cool. And so often we can get caught up with what we want as an expected outcome, that actually we don't see the beauty in the imperfection that we have created. And this might not be quite what I'd intended, but I still think it's really cool. And I always tell my group, it never goes wrong. It simply takes a new direction. And now it's time to introduce Naz, who is going to be showing us decoupage pebble making. Pebble decoupaging. So this is one that I did, an example. And this is a shell, because it works with shells as well. And I started off by getting stone and choosing a serviette and you find that they're actually usually three ply so you get this handy white layer here that I've used to cover the stone and I do a couple of layers usually so none of the dark colours come through and then cut out the design that appears on the serviette and glue that on the top so you cover it all in that design and then once you've covered the whole of the stone and let it dry I find that something like this, this acrylic sparkly glitter paint um, gives it a nice little sheen at the end a bit of bling, a bit of sparkle there we go, have fun with yours
Thanks Naz, that was awesome. That's about all we've got time for today. But I have your shopping list ready for next week's activity. So you might want to grab a pen and paper. What you'll need for next Friday is some old drinks cans. Um, you'll need some wire. Now this can be gardening wire, this can be craft wire. This could even be those little tie things that you have for bin bags. Um, so use what you've got around the home, you know, we can adapt, it doesn't have to be all shop bought stuff, okay? Beads, now not everybody has beads lying around their house, some people do have a craft box of those kind of things, but if you don't, um, I do just suggest kind of having a rummage around like um, old jewellery boxes for things that you haven't worn for ages, I know I had a whole ton of like cheap jewellery that I literally haven't worn for like five years. And actually, it's so good to just revamp and upcycle things. So I just literally cut them off and have turned them into something new and beautiful. And we're very much for upcycling and repurposing in this group. So yeah, let's create something new. Have a fantastic week. And I am looking forward to seeing you all at the show and tell session as well next week. Okay, bye.